Now, although the um, contributions to our understanding of quality management um, can go on for some time, there is only one other that I want to discuss uh, in any in detail, and that is the Toyota production system, because it's um, still having a significant effect across a large number of industries. The Toyota production system uh, is largely credited to uh, one particular um, person. In, in fact, there were a group of people who cooperated to get it going. The one person uh, was Taichi Ono, uh, who was sent by um, the uh, boss of Toyota at the time, uh, whose name was Toyoda, um, to the US to, to see how the US manufactured cars. And uh, Ono came back uh, with his understanding of the mass production and uh, very quickly decided that it could not be reproduced in Japan. There were two reasons why not. The first was Japan doesn't have the amount of uh, flat land that the US has. And Japan is about 80% um, mountainous and it's um, subject to cyclones and earthquakes. So you couldn't put a factory on a hill, for example. So the amount of flat land that was available was, was not much, so they couldn't afford a lot of land. That meant that they couldn't have uh, large factories with multiple production lines and multiple stamping mills as they intended to have in Detroit. The second thing was that uh, Japan at the time, and we're talking about um, not long after the Second World War, didn't have that much money. So they couldn't afford to have the number of stamping presses. They, they, they just couldn't do it. So they had to find ways of making the one stamping press um, serve multiple functions. Now additionally, what is not often uh, uh, cited in this is, is that the Japanese uh, society is a very um, collaborative, cooperative society. Um, there is a mutual uh, obligation on the part of the employer and the employed uh, to work um, cooperatively to the betterment of, of everybody concerned. So as a consequence, uh, it was very natural for the Japanese to um, trust that people will do their best by the organization, their best efforts to uh, further the organization's goals and to achieve the organization's goals. So these things all combined uh, to enable the, um, well, first to, to require the um, very flexible uh, Toyota production system and then to enable the Toyota production system. So between uh, Taichi Ono and uh, uh, Chingo, they and uh, Toyota himself, between 1948 and 1975, now starting in 1948, they started introducing this whole idea that um, the person best produced to know whether something has been done right is the person doing it. And uh, you didn't need uh, an inspector to tell whether that person had done, done the thing correctly. Uh, he will actually try to do it correctly. The big problem is whether what he's, what he's doing it on. So if the component is faulty, that person trying to install that component is probably the best place to determine whether that component is faulty or not. So why not trust them to um, tag that component as faulty and reject it and put in a different one? They're also best placed to know whether something just isn't right. Uh, that is something upstream in the manufacturing hasn't been done correctly and uh, would lead to, to greater problems. So these things combine to um, enable or to, to authorize the worker to uh, stop the production line if that was necessary. Now, obviously there's a lot of pressure on to not stop the production line. But in the early days, apparently, it was quite disheartening the amount of times that the, the production line stopped. And it, it was just took a long time to get going. And by a long time, I mean about 10 years to get it functioning pretty well. But the essential thing there was the, um, uh, the responsibility given to the person doing the manufacturing uh, to do it, do it right. Now then there were uh, various other things that went on as well. Now, given that they didn't have a whole lot of land, it meant that, they, that, that Toyota could not afford to store a lot of work in progress. 
So they wanted uh, delivery of components from other parts of, of the factory or other uh, suppliers to be just in time and just in the quantity that, that was convenient. Um, so, for example, they might have a delivery every hour of the next hour's worth of components, and that meant you didn't have to store too many of them. Uh, they were there when they were required. And of course, if they weren't there when they were required, then the whole production line stopped. So, uh, between this, uh, the, the, the principle of just in time and, and the very uh, flexible uh, stamping presses and, and the whole thing needed to reduce the number of people you needed, the number of managers you needed, the number of inspectors that you now didn't need, uh, went into creating this Toyota production system. Now that was big news back in say the 1970s or, or something uh, like that. Uh, it was studied by um, some MIT scholars uh, who went to find out how come uh, Japanese car manufacturers, particularly Toyota, were able to introduce new models faster than uh, the counterparts in the US or um, in Germany. Now to illustrate that, in Germany, uh, introducing a new Mercedes-Benz from conception to actually rolling the first one off the production line is about five years. The equivalent in Japan is about, I think, 29 months, so two years, something like that. The whole idea then that um, uh, Toyota can get their returns on their design, their investment in the new design, uh, after two years where it takes five years for um, uh, Mercedes-Benz. Now, as I say, um, since that time, the, the principles of the Toyota production, production system, as just in time, and Kanban, and um, uh, Poppy Yoka, and uh, uh, a number of other um, innovations, have spread throughout the organization. Now, these apply to software development as well, and even in software development, we're starting to see a concentration on the number of um, uh, items in work in progress. Uh, the need to detect errors quickly and to fix those quickly uh, early in the uh, production, early in the software development uh, area. Um, the, I suppose, the Kanban principles uh, that are starting to come in with a lot of agile uh, software development. But there's been a great deal of emphasis on uh, Toyota's um, lean production system. Now, again, uh, what happened was that as Toyota uh, engaged their um, suppliers, uh, they, they tended to have to go out and fix the suppliers' uh, quality management problems and uh, supply problems. And they found after a while they were, they were encountering and fixing the same problems time after time. And so eventually they developed this approach to, to improving the quality of their suppliers. And this became quite uh, famous as the, um, uh, the, among other things, the wastes of it. But the whole of it, uh, the Toyota production system, uh, the first thing was to um, design out inconsistency. So things had to, had to be consistent across the entire um, supply chain. They also wanted to get rid of uh, overburden, that is uneven, uneven load. So if you have one person here working, uh, you know, working flat out and somebody here without much to do, this is uneven. If you have one machine that is, is um, uh, trying hard to produce and another machine that is not, not overly, um, not, not working too hard, then you try to balance that out. You try to get evenness across the system uh, as much as you can. So that means uh, largely that, that machinery has to be multi-purpose, uh, people have to be multi-skilled, and we're seeing that in uh, software development because of the uh, variations um, of just how things get done. You can't have somebody who says, oh, I just cut code. Well, you can be a code cutter and you can be a database designer and you can go fix bugs and you can do these other various things so that you can shift around to, to help smooth out the flow and just pitch in wherever help is needed. So that was, that was uh, constancy, uh, sorry, overburden, which is moody. The last one which gathers most of the attention is a concentration on waste, muda. Now, waste, we're talking about uh, 
originally Toyota talked about seven types of waste. There are in fact now eight types of waste. Now the first of these is waste of overproduction. So producing more than you need. All, all that happens is you've got to store it somewhere and then it, maybe it goes off. And, uh, you know, the other, other problem is if you, you uh, produce it all, or maybe you produced it wrong, so now you just wasted a whole lot. So reducing the amount to be produced to match as much as the amount to be consumed is ideal. Waste of time. So waiting, things that are waiting uh, are not good. You can't have somebody sitting around waiting on the production line. Uh, in software development, again, it just means that you shouldn't have people who are sitting around waiting for this to be reduced or that to be produced. Uh, as much as is possible, things should arrive at the time when they're needed and uh, nobody should be sitting around waiting. So we, we try to do that. Ways of transportation. Obviously, uh, uh, in a factory environment, transportation is quite a big deal. But with software, electronic transmittal of uh, software and software artifacts and software development artifacts kind of leave that out a bit. Uh, but we could have um, transportation of people, particularly if you have geographically dispersed uh, places. But transportation, uh, you try to minimize. The waste of uh, processing. Um, so it's, it's as opposed to overproduction when you're doing unnecessary things within the process. The process should be the minimal number of things you need to do in order to produce whatever it is you're producing. You should not do more processing than is necessary. Waste of stock at hand. Um, they're probably destroying it. Waste of movement. So within, um, as opposed to transportation, waste of movement by the person doing the work. So they're having to move from place to place to place. Now, in software development, that uh, you could probably um, imagine that as being uh, having to deal with far too many different environments and moving the, the information around from one place to another. Uh, we have to uh, try to try to shift it from places. Um, and the waste of making defective components. So, not only the waste of production or overproduction, but if you're producing something defective and you have to correct it, now you don't want to do that. What you want to do is to produce it probably um, get it right first time. Uh, so there is a, quite a concentration on that um, on software. Now, the, the eighth waste that has been introduced, not by Toyota, but uh, since that time uh, by, I think, people in the West, was the waste of talent. If you have talent and capabilities available, uh, presumably, and that are needed, uh, then Wasting those talents is, is uh, basically a crime. You ought not do it. If there's talent available and it can be used, you should use it. Um, now that has become fairly famous as the um, the uh, Toyota Lean uh, production system. There is a bit more to it than that, but for the moment that will do. We've got seven, or if necessary, eight uh, wastes to be eliminated. And that has become quite famous and quite applicable to a large number of industries.